Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello, my dear friend and student. This is chapter number two of corporate finance. Topic is capital budgeting and estimating cash flow. Right. In this chapter, inshallah, we will talk about the following topics. These are the topics that we will discuss it. And this is your course outline. Uh, sorry, this is the course uh, outcome. The topic outcome. It means this is the outcome of the chapter. And this is the reference book. Chapter 12 of this book, and I have uploaded this one in your portal. So please check that one. So chapter number 12 of that one is belong to this chapter. Uh, the first, of course, initially we have to talk about capital budgeting. Uh, but before to talk about capital budgeting, first of all, if you see capital budgeting is the combination of two words, capital and budgeting. First, we have to say what is the meaning of capital, then what is the meaning of budgeting, and then we can define capital budgeting. Okay, first of all, uh, capital. What do you mean by capital? If we define accounting, if we define uh, capital from the accounting perspective, we can say uh, capital is the amount which is introduced by owner of the business to the business. One definition. Or capital is the amount through which we run the business. Another definition, but if we define from the finance profit perspective regarding investment, we can say capital is specifically regarding this topic. Capital refers to the amount allocated for investment in fixed asset or project. If any amount is allocated for project for investment in fixed asset or project, so that amount can be called as what as capital. It means if you allocate a particular amount to invest it in the projects or any fixed asset land buildings and so on that amount can be called as well as capital even the same definition can be applied in the business as well in any cases right so any amount which is invested in fixed asset or project can be called as capital second one what is budgeting budgeting is the process of planning projected inflow and outflow of cash during a specific future period Simply, you can say budgeting means the process of estimation of inflow of cash and outflow of cash over a specific future period, right? So you just in estimate that how much will be our inflow and how much will be our outflow in the future. That can be called as well as budgeting, right? Now, if you want to define the capital budgeting, you can define capital budgeting in this way. Capital budgeting refers to the decision to invest the current fund of the business concern most effectively in fixed asset and projects in anticipation of an expected future and expected flow of future benefit over series of years. You can say in this way, what is capital budgeting? Capital budgeting means if you invest the current fund or the available funds in the projects or asset most effectively and with the anticipation or with the expectation of having future inflow over number of years so this can be called as what capital budgeting once again what is capital budgeting capital budgeting means if you invest the current funds in the projects or in the fixed asset with the expectation or with the estimation of or with the anticipation of having several inflow in the future over a number of years that can be called as what capital budgeting right it is very simple so you just invest the current fund somewhere and you expect to have some inflow from that one. That can be called what? Capital budgeting. Another name for capital budgeting simply can be investment decision. What decision? Investment decision. So in investment, initially you invest and finally you expect to have some return from that. That can be called as what? Capital budgeting or investment decision. For capital budgeting or investment decision, there are process. It means before to select any investment or before to select any project, so first of all, we have to go through the through the following uh, steps. Step number one is project generation. Project generation simply means identification of investment proposal. First of all, you have to identify so in which investment you want to invest, right? Or for example, we can say uh, the idea for the project itself, identification of investment, how many projects, for example, you have, what are different options, A option, B option, C option, right? So you just, for example, search in the market or you collect data through your friends. You, you, for example, have your own creativity. You collect information, right? Here is the step of identifying 
In this step of we can say creating idea, for example, what? Whether to start a restaurant, whether to start a club, for example, whether to start a swimming pool, whether to start a university or so on. These are the step of what generation. So initially you get idea. Second one, after this one, <clears throat> even before evaluation of the project, you have to go for a screening of the project. A screening is just one step before, uh, before, before evaluation. In a screening, we do this one. We have to go for the feasibility reports. What reports? Feasibility report should be provided. Feasibility report simply means possibility, yeah? whether it is possible for us or not. Feasibility report should be provided on the following points. Technical feasibility report, commercial feasibility report, resource feasibility report, economic feasibility report, and legal feasibility report should be provided. First of all, what is technical feasibility report? It means if you start a project, whether it is technically possible for us to run it or not, right? Whether we have enough, enough human resource for that or not. Whether we have enough machines and equipment for that or not, right? Technically, it is possible or not, right? So if it is possible, you can run the project. Otherwise, you cannot run the project. Commercial feasibility means, for example, whether there will be a buyer or seller, whether there will be a demand for your product, suppose if you want to start a restaurant in a particular location, whether there is a demand for that one or not, right? So there should be demand for that. Resource feasibility, whether if you start your project, resource will be available for this or not. Resource can be human resource, resource can be, uh, for example, financial resource, non-financial resource, non-human resource, several other things that we need in the project, whether all these things are available or not, right? And of course, economic, economical feasibility report means, for example, whether your project is economical or not. It means whether it is a profitable project or not. And finally, legal feasibility, whether uh, the project is legally allowed in this country or not. For so example, it is not possible to start a project of, for example, producing wine, right? Or several other cases. If that is so, of course, it is not allowed in our country. So it means even before evaluation, please escape the project. So screening means just one step before evaluation, See the technical possibility, the commercial, the resources available or not, whether it is profitable or not, whether it is legally allowed or not. After that, go for project evaluation, the evaluation of the profitability and risk of the project. So we have to evaluate whether, uh, how is the profitability of the project and what is the risk of the project. Risk is more or profit is more. Whether should we accept the project or not, right? So these are the information that we have to do. And this one, inshallah, profitability will be taken in chapter number four, and risk will be taken in chapter profitability chapter number three, and risk in chapter number four will be discussed how to uh, manage, how to calculate the profit, and how to calculate the risk. Project selection, then after uh, finding the profitability as well as the risk of the project, the next step is we can select the project, which project is good, A is good, B is good, C is good, and so on, right? And after selection, implement and follow up the project. And finally, performance review means, in this case, we have to go for the purpose of control and compare the actual performance with the budgeted or estimated one. How was or what was our estimation and what was the actual performance of the project. So this six steps are to be followed in the case of any project in order to how to stop it and how to implement it. One more important topic in the case of capital budgeting is depreciation and we know what is the meaning of depreciation when we allocate the cost of the pro the cost of the project or asset over it is useful life that can be called as well depreciation or reduction or decrease in the value of fixed asset due to passage of time or usage or obsolescence or both can be called as well depreciation several methods of depreciation we have for example straight line method diminishing method or we can say written down value method or decrease value method, annuity method, insurance policy method, revaluation method, unit charge system method, which is, can be called production unit or time bound method, machine hour rate, sum of digits, and so on. Right? These are different methods of depreciation. Some of them you have to study in financial accounting, like a straight line method and diminishing method. For this one, we will not discuss it in corporate finance. Why? Because it's accounting topic somehow. 
the of course I will provide note for you in your portal regarding calculation of each method and how they can be used or when they can be used right one of the method of depreciation which is commonly used in United States is called Mackers modified accelerated cost recovery system right it is usually applicable there it is basically the combination of two methods combination of double decline method even declining method or diminishing method can be divided into two part double decline single decline then this method is the combination of a straight line method and diminishing method we will not discuss this one or uh, we will not discuss the calculation of this one but we will talk about the usage of this one in corporate finance how we can use this one here basically uh, once again uh, let me tell you generally in united states of course they have to follow this one and usually profitable firms use this method of depreciation in this method of depreciation initially rate of depreciation will be more which is called double decline and finally rate of depreciation decrease why this is so because they feel that the project usually gave more profit or gave maximum usage in the initial in, in the initial life so that is why most cost of the assets should be charged in the initial years as compared to the next year, later years so that is why initially they charge more and after that uh, they are charging lesser 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 up to the end of the project right under this method all assets are divided into eight groups how many groups eight groups here i have mentioned just six of them three years asset five year asset seven years asset 10 years asset 15 years asset 20 years asset i think 29 and 36 something like that it is in united states once again i'm telling you and also they have mentioned that which asset should come under this one which asset should come under this one which asset should come under this one and this one no need and no tension for the calculation of this one and so on just the table is available for you you just find out your asset comes under which one for example if your asset comes under this one apply this percentage in the first year apply this percentage in the next year in the next year in the next year right so these are just the rate which are available for you you just you can apply if your asset comes under 15 years apply this rate first year second and up to the end right so this is just the method rate is also calculated no need for us to calculate once again so table is available for us why we should not use from the table only the need is for us to identify your asset comes under which group you find your group apply that rate on your fixed asset one more thing that we have to understand here is see it is mentioned three years but the perception is for how many years for four years the problem with this method is that not the problem the custom which they follow is called half year convention method what method half year convention half year convention means in the first year they charge only half year in the last year also they charge half year it means if you pur if you purchase your asset in 2019 if you purchase at the beginning of there or if you purchase at the end of there for the first year they charge only half of the depreciation not the whole percentage of depreciation suppose the actual depreciation for this one might be 66.66 but they have divided into two parts so that is why it is 33.33 percentage right so this year is half and last year is also half half plus half one two and become three right so it again it became three years this is five but become how much six so last year is half first year is also half half plus half one two three four and five right so this is the method of the procession so this is the table which is given for us so we have to calculate the depreciation for our examples based on this table i will provide this table for you in exam as well so but i will mention that your asset comes under which group then you can apply the rate uh, for your calculation right one thing more before to go for the calculation and so on is the depreciable basis it means if you want to calculate the depreciation of a project which cost to be considered while calculating the depreciation these two things to be considered while calculating the depreciation number one cost of the asset should be considered and number two capital expenditure cost of the asset uh, means for example suppose you purchase a machine from china for ten thousand dollars for how much for ten thousand that is cost of the cost of the asset then again you have to pay some transportation costs for that one to bring it to Kabul. you have to pay custom duty for that one you have to for example bring it to your business you have to install it you have to fix it and so on 
several other costs other than the cost of purchase of fixed asset. All of them can be called as well in this case as a capital expenditure. So while calculating the cost, while calculating the depreciation for the machine, you should calculate this one plus this one. Let us assume that the cost of the machine was ten thousand dollar, but the cost of other transportation, installation, for example, fixing, erection charge, and so on, is equal to supposed to five thousand dollar. So five plus ten becomes how much? Fifteen thousand. So the depreciation should be charged on fifteen thousand, not on ten thousand, right? So remember this thing for calculation of depreciation. The next thing which is very important for capital budgeting is this one: information required for capital budgeting. What do we need for capital budgeting or means for for an investment? It means if you want to make a make it if, if you want to make investment, you need the following three items. Number one, you need the cash flow, which is very important. I will discuss it in the next slide, and there are several steps for this one. Cash flow is needed. It means you have to know the inflow and outflow of cash. Second thing which is very important is required rate of return. Required rate of return should be calculated. What important? It means if you want to start a project, here you have to calculate the rate of return that you will receive from the project, and as well as you have to understand the required rate of return. Required rate of return means in this case cost of the project. So you have to compare the, the return of your project with the required rate of return. If your return is more than the required rate of return, you accept the project. But if your return is less than the required rate of return, please reject the project. Required rate of return of the project means the cost which incurred for the project. Suppose it might be 10%. Then you have to calculate the return of your project. If your return is more than 10%, accept it. Otherwise, reject the project. This is the, the case which is very important. Then we will calculate it, inshallah, in chapter number 5. Uh, which is cost of capital. Cost of capital is for this one as well. Other information which are needed for capital budgeting is economic life of the project. It means the project is for how many years? Second one, available fund. How fund whether do we have available fund or not? Risk of obsolescence. It means risk of the project, right? So not only profitability but risk of the project is also very important. So we have to calculate. The first which we said is the cash flow information required for us. What do you mean by cash flow? Cash flow of the project simply means the inflow of cash and outflow of cash. Two cash flow we have in the project. Outflow of cash means simply the cost of the project. How much fund is needed in order to start the project? This is called what cost or cash outflow. And after that, if we start the project with this amount of capital, how much will be the future cash inflow? Future cash flow means the benefit from the project, right? <clears throat> And later on, based on this inflow and outflow, we can estimate whether the project is profitable or the project is uh, not profitable, right? So cash flow simply means the inflow of the project and outflow. Inflow means profit or revenue from the project. Don't call it profit, just simply call it revenue. Revenue from the project as well as the uh, outflow means expenses or costs of the project. Here, the inflow or outflow in the case of project is divided into three parts. How many types of cash flow and cash flow in the project? Three types. Initial cash outflow. Initially, how much we pay for the project? How to calculate this one? In the next slide, we will calculate this one. If we start a new project or if we start if we purchase a new asset, how much is needed initially in order to purchase that one or in order to make that investment? Next one. Net annual cash inflow or operating cash flow after starting the project. So our project is for how many years and how much inflow we will have for each year. That can be called as what? Annual cash inflow or operating cash flow, right? So definitely, initially you invest in the project and later on you receive the inflow. Inflow might be for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, depends on the number of, then depend on the age of the project or life of the project. Next one is terminal cash inflow. Some of the project may have a terminal cash inflow of different as compared to the previous year. For example, see, suppose the project is for four years. For how many years? For four years. Year one, year two, year three, year four. In the year four, inflow might be a little bit different. And we need some sort of adjustment for that one. Why we need? Because if you finish the project, finally, of course, you sell the scrap of the project, right? The scrap of the assets. 
Finally, if there is some if, if if there is the need for working capital during the operation of the project, when you close the project, there is no need, uh, no more need for working capital. So you can take that working capital as well. There are some other revenue and expenses at the end of the project. So we need some sort of adjustment. So that is why. So I have mentioned the third group of cash flow, which is called terminal cash inflow. So terminal cash inflow might be a little bit different, or we can say we need some sort of adjustment, right, for the last year. So this is just the inflow of the last year, which we need some adjustment. For example, as I said, projected for four years. Year one, year two, year three is fine. Regularly we receive. But year four, we close the project. There might be a little... Uh, there might be several more number of inflow and outflow, so we need some sort of adjustment. We have to calculate, right? Now, these are the formula for calculating each of those methods. For example, initial, annual, and so on. For all of these, there are steps and formula. We have to calculate it, right? These are the steps. Initial cash outflow or initial investment can be calculated in this way. First of all, in order to understand how much is needed to uh, operate the project, or how much is needed to start the project, we have to calculate in this way. First of all, calculate how much is the cost of the project. How much you purchase the asset. For example, previously I said, if you purchase a machine from China, it may cost you suppose 10,000. That is the cost. How much capital expenditure you spend on that one? Suppose I said 5,000 for transportation and so on, so it becomes 5,000. Then, if due to increase, if due to starting this project, if working capital increased, so add the increase in working capital with those items. If due to the start of this project, working capital decreased, then minus the decrease in working capital from the above project, right? Only one of this will be available in the project. Later on, you will understand these things through the examples, right? If you have only this two, like cost of the assets, then capital expenditure, then either increase in the working capital or decrease in the working capital, right? So these three or these four items, <clears throat> three or sometimes three items basically, I mentioned four, but only one of them will be available. So this three, this three will be available only in the case of expansion projects. Which projects? Expansion projects. Expansion projects means so you do not sell your old asset, but along with the old asset, you purchase the new asset as well. For example, already you have supposed four machines. You purchase the fifth one as well. You purchase the sixth one as well. You purchase the seventh as well. You do not sell the old machine. You just expand your project, right? So this is called, in the case of expansion, we do not sell the old. We just purchase the new one. If you purchase the new one, how much you purchase, how much expenditure, whether working capital increase or decrease. Doesn't matter that both of them should be available or some or even one of them should be available sometime even we start uh, we start the new project or if we purchase the new asset working capital may not increase or working capital may not decrease then on that case we have only two of them right so suppose if working capital increased add it if working capital decreased just deduct it right so this is in the case of expansion project but in the case of replacement project Replacement project simple means those projects in which if we we want to replace the old machine. For example, you have three machines. We do not increase it to four. So in this case, we sell one of the machine and we want to purchase the new machine, right? So we do not increase it. We just replace the old one with the new one. So if you go for the replacement project, so you have to go for the whole steps. All of these steps should be available in the project. And... Uh, if you go for the all steps, so you have to follow this blue one as well. Then on that case, minus the net proceed from sales of old asset. How much you sold the old asset, right? Why now? Because it is the case of sales of old asset as well. So we have to sell the old asset and we need to purchase the new asset. New asset. So this information was regarding new asset, but this information is regarding the old asset. How much you sold the old asset minus that value? If on the sales of all the set you made profit, you made profit, right? Then you have to pay tax to the government. This is called tax charge due to the sales of all the set. For example, let us say that old machine, you purchased the old machine for $10,000. For how much? For $10,000. Uh, 
and you charged $10,000 as a depreciation. And finally, you can sell or you sold the old machine for $2,000. For how much dollar? $2,000. So what is the case here? You purchase the machine for $10,000 and you charge the $10,000 as a depreciation. Now everything is over. But still, you can sell the old machine for $2,000. That $2,000 can be considered as a profit. So if you have the profit on that one, you have to pay tax to the government based on the profit. Or otherwise, if there is no profit, there might be loss. And on that case, you have a tax saving due to the sales of old, old assets. What do you mean by tax saving? For example, you purchase the machine for 10000 and you charge, for example, only 8000 depreciation, right? So it means how much is remaining? 2000 remaining. It means you have to sell the machine for 2000 in the market in order to finish or nullify the cost of the machine. But when you go in the market, you cannot sell the machine more than 1000 How much? More than 1000 So 8000 depreciation is charged plus 1000 you sold in the market. 8 plus 1, how much? 9000 So So uh, you purchased it for 10000 but you charge only 9000 How much less? 1000 So in this project, it means you suffered 1000 on that 1000 you're not paying tax to the government, but you again, you're taking tax, tax saving. This is called tax saving or tax return back from the government, right? So the point is that if you made profit on the old project, you have to pay tax to the government. But if you suffered loss on the old project, so you have to receive back from the government. You have to study these things in financial management under uh, principles of, uh, uh, what do we call for the principle? Yeah, carry back principle and carry forward principle, right? If you suffer loss, we have to retake back from the government. These things are basically even available in our country as well. So if you suffer in our country, you have to uh, you have to classify your tax for the next three years. So for the next three years, you can carry uh, back your tax, right? So at the end, whatever is the information, so this can be called the result of the initial cash outflow, right? So remember. Finally, whatever is the amount, this amount can be considered as what? As initial cash outflow. Once again, let me tell you, if you have only expansion projects, which we will have initially, I will solve several examples for this projects. We will have only this part, cost of the project, expenditure of the project, working capital either increase or decrease or none of them. But after that, we will go for the replacement project. Then on that case, we will have all of them. Then cost of the new asset, capital expenditure, working capital increase or decrease. Then the rest of the information is regarding old machine. Why? Because in this projects, you purchase the new machine and you sell the old machine. So how much you sold the old machine minus that amount? Whether you made profit on that or whether you suffered loss. If you made profit, pay tax on that. If you suffered loss, so collect, collect tax back from the government, right? So these are the sort of information regarding the calculation of inflow. So whatever is the result, the result is cash also. <clears throat> but remember, in this project, depreciation will be calculated based on this one, as I said before. Why? Because if, I, if you remember, we said depreciation should be charged on the cost of asset plus what? Capital expenditure. So depreciation will be charged based on this two only. Rest of the things are not attached with the depreciation. Good. Next step is, or next type of cash inflow is annual cash inflow. Or net annual cash inflow how to calculate this one this is very simple and very important even this is important for the chapter number three as well how to calculate this one net increase in operating revenue it means if you start the new project you are operating revenue increase or decrease usually our operating revenue should increase so increase in operating revenue minus increase in operating expenses for example Operating revenue increased by 50,000, operating expenses increased by 40. 50 minus 40, result is equal to how much? 10,000. But remember, this expenses does not include the depreciation, excluding depreciation, right? So increase in revenue minus increase in expenses. One case, or otherwise, if you don't have this one, you may have this one. Increase in revenue plus decrease in expenses. Why? Because decrease in expenses itself is also what? Revenue, right? In some of the projects, when we start, our revenue may not increase, but our de expenses may decrease. So expenses decrease or decrease in the expenses itself is what? Revenue for us. 
So either go with this one, increase in revenue minus increase in expenses, or go with this one, increase in revenue plus decrease in expenses, or just decrease in expenses itself as a revenue, right? So whatever is the result of this one, suppose increase in revenue minus increase in expenses. After this, whatever is the amount, that amount can be called as well, profit before tax and depreciation. For example, revenue increased by 50,000 and expenses increased by 40. 50 minus 40 become 10,000. So for this 10,000, we call what? Profit before tax and depreciation. After that, we have to minus depreciation. Minus depreciation, then you will get profit before, before tax. Then minus tax, minus tax, you will get profit after tax and what? Depreciation. After that, after tax, once again, add the depreciation. Initially, we deducted the depreciation. Once again, we have to add back the depreciation. Add the depreciation, then you will get net profit after tax, but before depreciation. Now, your question might be, for example, why we add depreciation back? Because depreciation is a non-cash non expenses. What expenses? Non-cash expenses. <clears throat> non-cash expenses means, for this one, we have deducted the amount. We have allocated a particular amount for depreciation. But this amount is, is still available in the business. So finally, if you want to calculate how much cash is available in the business, so please, once again, add back that depreciation with the cash available in the business. So that is why, as this amount or the amount that we calculate or what, that we allocate for depreciation is not going out of the business, it still is available in the business, that is why these expenses can be called as non-cash expenses. Rest of the expenses are cash expenses. For example, rent, you pay rent, right? You pay an owner of the building, receive it. Salary is cash expenses, but depreciation is a non-cash expenses. Why? Because you deduct for depreciation, but the cash is still available with you in the business. So finally, in order to calculate how much cash is available, how much is the total cash inflow, once again, you have to add back the depreciation, right? And then calculate. So, this is the amount that we will consider for the purpose of evaluation of the project. So net profit after tax but before depreciation is needed for calculation of the project in order to check whether the project is profitable or not. So please remember, if you, you are in this step, it means profit before tax and depreciation minus depreciation. Then after that, you will get profit before tax. Then minus tax, you will get profit after tax and depreciation. Then after tax, once again, add back the depreciation, you will get profit before tax, after tax, but before depreciation. So for the calculation of project, this step is needed. So if you are in this step, please bring yourself in this step. Even you are in this step, bring yourself in this step, make the adjustment. And the last year, terminal cash inflow. Terminal cash inflow might be a little bit different. <clears throat> Whatever is the result of the last year? Last year, suppose your project is for five years, right? Whatever is the, the cash flow for the fifth year recorded once again back here, in that one, make some sort of adjustment. What are the adjustment? Add final salvage of the new asset. Why? Because the new project which you have started or the new asset which you purchased at the beginning of this one, finally, you have to sell it back in the market. Salvage means... The residual value of the asset. All the asset should be sold out in the market, right? So how much you sell that one? So please add that one also with the inflow of the last year. If you pay some expenses because of selling of those asset, so please minus that expenses. For example, you want to sell the machine, for example, in the, in the market. You sold it for 10000 but you paid 1000 thousand transportation to bring that one to the market, right? So minus please that expenses, disposal cost. If you made profit on the sales of new asset, please pay tax to the government. If you suffered loss on the old of on, on the sales of new machine, please collect back tax from the government, like the initial part. And finally, when you close the project, finally there is no need once again back for the working capital. So and so add the decrease in working capital as well, right? So if there is no need for, if, if, you pro, if you close the project, finally there is no need for working capital again. So if there is no need for working capital, so please decrease your working capital. So if you decrease your working capital, that also can be considered as an inflow. Please add that one. Or if finally, 
you when you close the project once again requirement for the working capital increase so please minus that one finally whatever you have that one can be called the terminal cash inflow so rest of the things inshallah will be discussed through a proper example in the next video